I think we're all looking and trying to ask the question, like, how do we live better longer? You know, and not mm-hmm. just how do we, li- how do we live better? Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is definitely like a tool in the tool belt. The reason I like the cold is it's extremely quantifiable. It's not like taking a supplement and wondering if it works. Like mm-hmm. it's very, cold therapy is very, very sensational and you get in, you experience it. It has positive effects on the body and the mind and you can come back to it. And it's the same experience every time. Mm. Uh, and it's just as hard every time, even though you build up a tolerance to it, like you still have this like inner, inner battle to overcome with exposing yourself to the cold. Um, especially as you get comfortable in it, uh, you know, you kind of get used to it. It's important to stay consistent. And then, you know, if you need to stay in for 30 seconds or, you know, drive the temperature down lower, you can always play with that. Um, but that's one of the reasons why, why I really like the cold is it's, it's impactful and it's quickly impactful. And a lot of us, uh, especially when we're in a state of suffering, quick relief that has lasting benefits is a great place to start. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the What Is Money Show. I am thrilled to have you here joining me on my mission to help shine light on the corruption of money. Now, if this is your first time listening to the What Is Money Show, I strongly recommend that you go back to episodes one through nine first, which lays a lot of the groundwork for many of the concepts that we explore on the show. These first nine episodes are my series with Michael Saylor and Thousands of people have told me that this is the best podcast series they've ever heard, hands down, and that it was instrumental to their understanding of money and Bitcoin. So if you're looking to start uh, a deep dive into the nature of money, I don't think there's any place better that you can start other than episode one of this show. Now, a little bit about this show and how it makes money. The What Is Money Show is 100% sponsor-based, so all of our revenues are derived from direct sponsorships. And I strive to be very selective about the sponsors that I work with, specifically only using sponsors that I use personally, and also choosing sponsors that have values which are well aligned to the values expressed on this show, such as freedom, education, self-sovereignty, etc. So what I'm going to do now is a few ad reads right at the top of the show, and then I'll do a few more ad reads in the middle. And I hope you'll take the time to listen to them, as again, these are hand-selected sponsors, and I think you'll like what they have to offer. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, iCoin Technology. iCoin has just released a sleek new hardware wallet. Looks like a mini iPhone, a little touchscreen and camera on it. Uh, The device has no Wi-Fi, no cellular connection, no GPS. It's a strictly physically cold hardware wallet. Uh, like I said, it's got a high res three inch touch screen. It's got a camera for air gapping the wallet. Uh, it's got optional Bluetooth compatibility. And it's a really a, a brand new UI UX experience for a hardware wallet, making it very accessible, easy to use, not intimidating. And as we always talk about on this show, the only way you can truly own your Bitcoin is by having it in self-custody. So you need a device like iCoin Wallet to truly own your Bitcoin. Go to iCoinTechnology.com today and use promo code BITCOIN23 for 30% off of this new sleek hardware wallet. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Ledin. Ledin lets you do more with your digital assets. For instance, Ledin offers a B2X loan product that lets you leverage your existing Bitcoin to buy even more Bitcoin. Or you can also get traditional Bitcoin collateralized U.S. dollar loans through Ledin as well. Ledin also offers both Bitcoin and USDC denominated savings accounts, letting you generate yield on your digital assets. Recently, Ledin has launched a Bitcoin mortgage product as well that lets you use Bitcoin to buy a home or finance one that you already own. So go to Ledin.io, that's L-E-D-N.io today to sign up. Wyatt Ewing, welcome to the What Is Money show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Glad to have you. Uh, Just by way of quick introduction, you are the founder of Ice Barrel which is a product um, in the cold therapy space. And cold therapy has just exploded on the scene recently as one of these very useful tools for a number of reasons. And uh, uh, I guess self-development, self-optimization, something like that. Could we start with just 
a general background on who you are, um, your path to founding Ice Barrel and, and discovering the power of cold therapy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess it, it had cold therapy has recently picked up in, uh, in popularity, but man, I was working on it back in 2017, 18, before it was even popular or cool. And, um, I was the crazy guy trying to give out free ice baths outside of gyms. Uh, <laughs> personally got into cold therapy, um, as a way to manage stress and anxiety. I was in a corporate aviation career. I'd help people buy and sell corporate jets. And that was like my thing. Lived in Castle Rock, Colorado. Uh, and I would commute up to to Denver and work out of Centennial Airport. Um, and then, but also traveled quite a bit, just helping people sell their airplanes and buy new airplanes. Uh, it was an extremely, it was extremely stressful. Uh, I had a young family, got a really early start to life. Uh, I was a, like financially independent by 17 moved out super young and uh, just kind of got after it. it was very inundated by the whole like hustle culture constantly grinding constantly trying to climb this never-ending ladder of success um and didn't have a ton of great mentorship along the way so uh during my corporate aviation days like i hit like uh mid-20 life crisis i guess like i was mm. really burnt out burning the candle at both ends um just constantly grinding. Uh, and I, again, I was extremely stressed up, uh, stressed out. I was, uh, I wasn't showing up for my family, for my kids, the way that I wanted to. Um, and I walked into this gym and this guy walked up to me and told me how awful I looked. <laughs> I was like, he just came out of nowhere and he was like, you look like shit. And I was like, that's super rude. Um, he's like, you should try cold showers and some breathing exercises. Um, now at that point, like I knew I wasn't feeling good and I, I was like totally struggling, you know, depression, anxiety. I was at a low point. So I was desperate and I had tried a lot of other healing modalities along the way. So meditation, um, trying to improve my physiology through supplements. Uh, I was, I would actively exercise, um, but still just like struggling, trying to get on top of life. And, um, so I was receptive, even though I was a little offended by the guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I went home and I took a cold shower and, uh, I just, you know, it was awful. Uh, just no, no experience. Didn't know what I was getting into. Just got in the shower and turned it cold. I was like, okay, I'm going to be in here for like two minutes and, uh, I'll just grit and bear it through it all. Uh, but then when I got out of the cold shower, I remember I looked up, looked at myself in the mirror and like. I just got this boost of like endorphins that I hadn't experienced in a while. And it just elevated my mood. And I, I was like, well, I'll try it again. So I just got consistent with it. And, um, it was crazy how it just initially just started changing my mood, my energy levels, uh, but also brought me to a state of presence, which I think is so important. It's so easy when you're in these big corporate careers or you're an entrepreneur and you're, spending so much time tending to the future that sometimes you start neglecting the here and now. And really like at the end of the day, I just needed to get where my feet were and get really present in the moment. And so cold therapy like forced me to that point. Uh, so I, again, just in my innovative mind, I just kept trying to figure out how can I optimize this practice? How can I get more out of it? Uh, I got to a place, they call it cold habituation, where you just become um, extremely resilient to the cold. And I could stand in a 15 minute cold shower and get down and feel fine. And though I'm getting the effects, like I wanted to just improve the experience and continually mm -hmm. optimize it. So I originally started creating the product based out of my own need and uh, out of necessity for uh, my own benefit. And I knew it was unique because one of the ways that I approached it is I wanted to support the body's natural response while it's in the fight or flight mode. So if you think about it, a lot of times people are taking ice baths lying down and nowhere in nature do you go into the fight or flight response and then lie down on your back. That mm -hmm. is a that is a position for resting and repairing. So I wanted to figure out how can I support the body as if I were to jump in a lake, what position would I assume? If I'm going to get into a cold river, what position do I assume? So that's where I came up with the idea, like, we should stay upright. 
Like mm-hmm. any other application in nature, the body would remain upright. The spine would remain straight to make breathing and concentration more effective uh, and easier. So I started developing the product around this idea. A lot of other factors played into it as well. Um, and then I became so passionate about it because by that point, like my life had changed drastically. I was so much more patient at home with my kids. Uh, I was way more intentional and focused in conversation and just present with my wife. And I was starting to give the energy that I wanted to, to the things that I loved most. Uh, so I became extremely passionate about cold therapy, not like the weird guy telling everyone to get a cold therapy, but just in the way of, you know, there's people out there like me that are burning the candle at both ends and they need to hit that reset button so that they can start over and start better. Um, so any opportunity I got to give somebody the experience of cold therapy, uh, I would do that. So I got the prototype, built the original product, which was made out of white oak. And then I took that around to like as many gyms as I could find in a 50 mile radius, thinking that it would be really widely received, but it was the opposite. People were like, ice baths are for NFL players. You're weird. Stop coming to my gym <laughs> offering our guests free ice baths on the way out. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it was it was a grind, uh, but it slowly picked up traction along the way. And it was so interesting because with all like the rejection and the no, every time I got a yes and then some brave soul would jump in the water, they were usually going through something. They had some kind of pain and they were trying to find a new way to suffer. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, pick mm-hmm. And so uh, they would get in the ice barrel, then they would get out. And naturally it's going to release this like euphoric feeling. You're usually coming out smiling, you're laughing, and you've, you've had this improved response in the body and, um, it reduces pain and inflammation. So people are naturally feeling better. That's where the, the term, uh, our tagline, uh, get colder, feel better. Like mm-hmm. that's what happens. You get colder and you're going to feel better. Um, and so, I mean, those moments made it all worth it kind of along the way. That's really cool. Um, and so I guess you kind of were introduced to cold therapy just by happenstance, the guy that <laughs> called you out in the gym or whatever it was. Yeah. What are the origins of cold therapy though? Because this is not, although it's something that's becoming recently popular, I think as we were talking offline, this is something that you said, I think ancient Japanese monks used to do. It was used in World War One, Civil War, et cetera. So like, what are the, the origins of cold therapy? Yeah. So I, I mean, ancient Greece got started like super early on. No surprise. They were using it for thermalism, which is this idea of there are these different temperature pools and they use them for different healing modalities, right? So uh, the initial idea was cold is going to relieve pain while like warm baths are going to increase circulation and blood flow and relax the muscles. So they were like some of the first people to do contrast therapy. Mm-hmm. And so they would set up these bath, ha- bath houses with different temperatures. They would add different salts and aromas and things like that into the water as well, just to promote general healing. So like they've been practicing for a very long time. Same thing with ancient Rome. Uh, the Japanese monks would sit under cold waterfalls uh, during the winters and they would meditate. They'd also take these uh, really thick like wool blankets and soak them in cold water, wrap themselves in them, and then they would just meditate until their body temperature would heat up the wool blanket. And it was crazy because you could read these studies when they would take the blankets off, they were like steaming and warm inside. Hmm. Uh, So super interesting. So it's been around for a really long time. it got popular during the Civil War because they were utilizing these cold rivers um, after amputations uh, mm. to help like, reduce swelling and inflammation, things like that, because they didn't have ice. Uh, then again, Native Americans would do the same thing. They would go from cold rivers in the winter time to like sweat huts. And that's not like your average sauna. Like those sweat huts are like 280. Like they're like super, super hot. Um yeah, it is wild. So they were doing some intense contrast therapy back and forth. So yeah, been around for a really, really long time. Although it the practice kind of got dropped off and neglected here in the West, um, probably over the last like 100, 150 years as people have, you know, post, I guess, industrial revolution, right? We're trying to make everything so convenient and 
makes things comfortable and stave off this idea of discomfort, even though like that's what makes us stronger, better, faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, the contrast therapy you mentioned, so that's going from obviously a hot, a hot situation to cold bath or cold situation and alternating. Uh, when I was, I trained at the Olympic training center when I was young and they, ha they did that for muscle soreness. Um, we were, we're doing Olympic weightlifting. So we're doing a lot of squats, getting very deep muscle tissue soreness, especially in the legs and the glutes. What, do you know what it is about the contrast? Cause they were using it to suck the soreness out of the muscles. Do you know if what the contrast therapy is actually doing and then what the other benefits of it are? Yeah. So it's this idea of vasoconstriction where you're, uh, restricting the muscles and the veins and then you're opening them back up. So it's flush, flushing the lactic acid out of the muscles. There's a lot of interesting ideas around this as well. If you're doing heavy weightlifting, like you want to allow the muscles to break down and you want to allow the inflammation to build up in order to promote the muscle growth. If you start hitting the cold too soon, you'll actually constrict the growth. And it, it's not super ideal for building muscle. Like you want to wait four to five hours after a workout if the goal is to build muscle before you expose yourself to cold. Now, if you're just trying to like get rid of the inflammation and feel better, then again, it can be a great quick healing modality. Gotcha. Okay. And then is cold therapy in general, is that useful in treating uh, systemic inflammation? Like people that just have inflamed, I mean, I know a lot of people have uh, inflamed digestive systems from poor diets and things like this. Is that something that's useful for treating that? Like long-term consistent uh, exposure to cold therapy can improve a lot of different functions in the body. Um, again, if you're just hitting cold therapy like once once a week, right, that's going to be great for like quick pain relief, uh, reducing inflammation, improving your mood and energy levels. But really like consistent and regular use of cold therapy, whether that's, you know, ideally full body immersion up to the neck. You know, that's going to stimulate the vagus nerve, which has a tremendous effect throughout the entire body. Uh, that's going to improve digestive system, uh, help with circulation, uh, improve your metabolic response, help with the endocrine system. So it's, it's just going to be an overall improvement. It staves off cognitive decline over time, helps with depression, things like that. But really, it needs to become part of your routine, part of your daily practice. Hmm. And I would also say it's like, it's interesting because it's, it's great for the physical body as well, but it's also great for uh, like your mental well-being. If you can conquer your ice bath the first part of your day or at some point in your day, that's going to be the hardest thing you do all day, mm. right? It, it, it's going to be the thing that throws you in the fight or flight response. It's going to be tough. There's going to be that, you know, inner voice telling you how hard it is that you shouldn't do it. And the more you discipline that and you can conquer that, it's the hardest part of your day. Everything else becomes simple. Hmm. That's interesting. So just by fact of comparison, you can make the rest of your life a lot easier, more enjoyable just by conquering that mountain of cold therapy once a day. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What are the, like, so if we get into the specific benefits of cold therapy, um, like starting with, I guess, anxiety. I think that's one that people try to deal with. Uh, what is it, what are the benefits of cold therapy to people trying to resolve anxiety? Yeah, so a couple different ways to look at this. I mean, you're shutting down that like inner voice inside uh, that is just ruminating over the fear of future, right? That's mm -hmm. what anxiety is. It's just like, you're, it's future fear. And I know there's like three to, three to four different like clinical types of anxiety. Uh, but one thing that is, congruent amongst all of them is this idea of like you're ruminating on things, mm -hmm. right? It's just inside eating you up. When you go into the fight or flight response and there's this form of use to stress, the good stress on the body, that rumination stops. Mm -hmm. And so being able to like take a breath, right? It's a moment where you can shut it down and you can take a breath is tremendous just in starting the healing process. Uh, the other thing that is interesting is it does stimulate and affect the vagus nerve. So you're going to naturally release uh, beta endorphins throughout the entire body, which is going to improve your mood uh, and your mental clarity. So, mm. and again, it's kind of the same thing with like depression. It's a, it's the same like healing work 
it's shutting down, you know, that those thoughts and the rumination that comes along with it. And then again, when you're just feeling like your physiology is in the dump, right? Cold therapy is boosting your mood, your energy levels, things like that. Huh. Interesting. You, I think you mentioned <clears throat> muscle recovery already that it's doing the vasodilation. So expanding and contracting, uh, the, the vessels, blood flow vessels, I guess, in, in the body. Is that what's helping with muscle recovery? Yeah, correct. Yep. Just like, just same, same idea. If you like have an injury and you ice the ice, it right, it's going to reduce swelling and it's going to flush the, uh, it's going to flush the lactic acid out of the muscle and improve blood flow to the area. And wherever there's blood flow, there's oxygen and that promotes healing throughout the body. Gotcha. Okay. And then what about, what are the benefits of cold therapy on mood? Again, it's, yeah. So you, if you, especially if you can get your full body submerged down to the base of the neck where it's stimulating the, the vagus nerve, like that's ancient Chinese medicine. They would, if you have a migraine, they would take an ice cube and place it on the back of the neck. And the, what the idea is if I can stimulate the nervous system, I can reset it. Uh, so you're getting all of these electrical impulses going, firing from the nervous system, and that's boosting your mood and energy levels because it's releasing hormones in the body that make you feel better. And again, these things are like, like we're supposed to experience and feel these things in the body. It's only because of our recent, um, desire for comfort that, that we've rejected them. Like cold, or hot water is like a new invention. It mm -hmm. hasn't been around, especially mm -hmm. hot water, man, right? Like that we are used to. Uh, so if you're going to bathe or do anything, like you're in colder temperatures than what we all, you know, uh, bathe in these days. Yeah, it makes sense. We uh, we often forget how much luxury we have around us in the modern age. Um, I think about the refrigerator often, you know, like such a struggle for humans to preserve food across time, basically for all of human history. And now we just take it for granted that we have a uh, freezer or a refrigerator that can store food for a long time. Um, on the, okay, so cold therapy, back to the benefits of cold therapy. What does it do or improving sleep. Uh, this is an area I've always been a pretty good sleeper, but then I've noticed as I've gotten older, it's been a little bit more of a thing to manage. Are there benefits to be gained from using cold therapy for improving sleep quality or duration? Yeah. So I have three kids. They're all fairly young still. So about, like sleep is uh, rare <laughs> here in mm -hmm. my house. It's like sacred when we can get it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so any chance I get to improve my sleep and sleep quality is like definitely a top priority for me. Uh, it's interesting. So I actually, for the longest time, I was taking my ice baths at like between five and 6 a.m. in the morning. It was like a cup, my cup of coffee, how I'm going to start my day. Uh, but as the years have gone on, uh, I actually take my ice baths in the evening before bed. Some people report that they get a strong boost of energy. Um, right after an ice bath, uh, which I can relate to as well. Like it is very energizing, but at the same time, I would equally say it's calming. Uh, there's mm. a sense of like, I'm just winding down. I'm resetting. I'm, you know, starting fresh here. Um, so I'll couple my ice bath with uh, a sauna session, usually do a couple rounds back and forth. And, and at that point I have strong circulation through the body. And when you go in, there's a lot of interesting sleep studies around uh, controlling the body's temperature, which is super fascinating. So your body, like when you're sleeping, is just working on cooling and bringing down the body's core temperature. So that's why a lot of people, you know, throughout the night, like they start kicking off, shedding layers throughout the night because their body starts like heating up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, starting with a lower temperature helps you fall into a deeper sleep faster. Andrew Heberman has a ton of great resources and information on his podcast and also uh, on his website about how cold therapy can affect and improve sleep quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense because you're, I know your core temperature drops a lot. So you're just kind of giving yourself a head start on on that process, right? Yeah, it's interesting. They're all, there's also this, a lot of new innovation around like these sleep mats where you can set the temperature. So the mat slips over your top sheet or under it. And then uh, it circulates cold water through it and you mm. can control the temperature of that bottom mat to help improve your sleep. So there's a lot of 
there's a lot of there's a lot of this idea going around. How can we optimize temperature to improve longevity? Mm, interesting. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, CrowdHealth. CrowdHealth is a Bitcoin enabled alternative to legacy health insurance. Now let's face it, legacy health insurance is an absolute scam. Nobody can explain this better than the legendary comedian Chris Rock. This is insurance. You got to have some insurance. You got to. There's an insurance. They shouldn't even call it insurance. They should just call it in case shit. <laughs> and I give a company some money in case shit happens. Now, if shit don't happen, shouldn't I get my money back? <laughs> so with CrowdHealth, instead of just paying premiums that you'll never see again, you can hold part of this pool of savings in dollars and in Bitcoin through CrowdHealth. And when you have a health event, you can draw against this pool of communal savings. So go to joincrowdhealth.com slash breedlove to learn more or sign up. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Wasabi Wallet. Wasabi lets you use Bitcoin privately while still maintaining full control over your money. Specifically, Wasabi Wallet is an open source, non-custodial wallet with privacy built in by default. By using Wasabi, you're effectively putting the private back in private property. Wasabi Wallet is an easy to use privacy wallet that can support any amount of Bitcoin transactions. So go to wasabiwallet.io today to download the state of the art wallet software. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Bitcoin Conference 2023. This three-day event will be held May 18th through 20th in Miami Beach. Uh, this is going to be the biggest event of the year, as it always is. And the past two years in Miami have simply been amazing. Uh, day one's industry day. Days two and three are going to be open to general admission. And I'd say this is a great place to go and network with Bitcoiners or even look for a job. Uh, just a really all-around great experience. There's a fantastic speaker lineup including Michael Saylor, Zoltan Pozar, Lynn Alden, Alex Gladstein, many others. And last year, we did a 10 million sats giveaway for this event, and we're going to do it again this year. So to get discounted tickets and enter for a chance to win 10 million sats, go to b.tc slash conference and use code BREEDLOVE. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Casa. Casa makes it simple to buy and secure your Bitcoin without wondering whether you're doing it right. Specifically, Casa provides a multi-key custody solution, which is by far the most secure way to custody your Bitcoin. Now, when I talk about Bitcoin being theft-proof money or inviolable private property, a multi-key custody model is exactly what I am talking about. Using multiple keys lets you maintain full control of your Bitcoin while also giving you redundancy in case you lose one of the keys. It's also the best way to secure your Bitcoin for inheritance planning purposes. So go to keys.casa, that's C-A-S-A, -A, today to sign up and use discount code BREEDLOVE. And then are there benefits of cold therapy for the nervous system as well? I think you mentioned like an overall reset. Um, what does that mean and what are the, the specific benefits of that? Yeah, so you're reconditioning the brain to like the fight or flight response, which is super important for us. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that stress us out and trigger us to go into a fight or flight response that it really shouldn't. Like there's a big difference between getting chased by a bear and somebody yelling at you in the grocery store for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Whatever. Right. Like right? there's these things and these times that we get so triggered by something and increases our heart rate, our blood starts pumping, and we're in the fight or flight response when we shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So we expose our body to cold water. That's a true, uh, it, like your body's fight or flight response. That's a true response and it should be there. And so the, again, when you start doing that and you reset the nervous system and you kind of start retraining it, I mean, for me, it was amazing when I would, whenever I'd get in these like aviation deals and we'd be at the, like a conference table trying to put these deals together, I would always like my pulse would rise, my palms would get sweaty. Mm. But as I started practicing in cold therapy, like it was amazing. Like my body just stayed in its homeostasis and I wasn't as easily like spiking during the day. Uh, and I just stayed in a place of like equanimity throughout the day. Well, I wonder if that would be useful because I've experienced that when doing public speaking still, like it's gotten a lot better 
with practice, but usually like the first few minutes or seconds of public speaking, you're like really turned up. Um, and then it takes a few minutes to settle down and kind of hit your flow. Um, we have a lot of like musicians that before they go and perform, like these are just world renowned mus uh, musicians, the ice barrel is portable and compact and they take it with them on their tour bus and they'll have it set up for before and after their show. We even, there's mm -hmm. videos of them right from the show into it. And then right, like right before they get into the show, they jump in, dry off, get dressed and hit the stage. So yeah, there's a lot of benefits to like bringing yourself quickly to a place of like presence and peace uh, before engaging in something. Wow. So it's sort of like, sounds like maybe like a meditation on hyperdrive or something, right? Just kind of forces you out of your mind and your body, something like that. Yeah, totally. It's yeah, it's like a very, it's very much an active meditation. That's one of the reasons why, like I was tired of doing it in like the family bathtub. I wanted mm -hmm. it to be own space. It's right. It's own place that I could engage it. I could leave it there. It's ready for me when I come back. And I didn't have to like, you know, go back to the family bathtub and kick all the toys out. Right. That <laughs> makes sense. Okay. That's, that's a lot of benefits. Um, so what do we do if you're trying to establish a cold therapy practice? Are there specific steps like are, that you try to phase into this? Or is it something you do all at once? Like, how do you, how do you instruct people that are trying to make this a part of their lifestyle? Yeah. I think honestly, one of the simplest ways is we all shower. So start with the cold shower, you know, at the end of your shower, turn it cold and, you know, count to 30 and then turn it warm again and then go back to cold and then, uh, start extending the times and, uh, don't create so much variance in it, you know? Mm. Don't go from hot to cold as much. Start tapering that off and just start building up, you know, a tolerance to the cold. Like that's a great place to start. Uh, and then from there, you're going to naturally then want to experience the full body submersion, which is super interesting because again, when, and the idea of how do we support the body's res best response, how do we create the best response in the body? Um, water volume matters. A lot of times with like bathtubs and stock tanks, like there's actually not that much water in there once you get in and you displace it. Uh, so the idea is how do we have a large enough container where there's enough volume of water to create hydrostatic pressure on the body, right? Mm. And put the cold pressure on the body, compress it uh, in order to get deeper therapeutic effects. And that's really the, one of the big difference between like cryotherapy and cold water immersion is cryotherapy is extremely topical. Um, whereas full body immersion, there's actual like pressure, cold pressure on the body. Uh, it's way, way, way stronger with the therapeutic response. So experience that. And then there's a natural progression. Um, try, you know, cold lakes and rivers that are safe, obviously. And, uh, just, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to get started. Um, you don't need to be a hero by any stretch. Like just get in the water, you know, for 30, 40 seconds and then allow yourself to build up a tolerance. Uh, you're still getting the benefits at like 55 degrees. So you don't even have to get down into the forties, although over time you're going to want to increase, uh, or decrease the temperature and, uh, just practice staying in for three to five minutes between 45 and 50 degrees. Mm, okay. So then in general, you just, you take a phased approach to introducing yourself to the cold, right? Start in the shower and then start with slightly higher temperature, shorter duration, and then just build it up over time. Kind of like working out or anything else. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also a lot of other ways to expose yourself to the cold. Like you can go outside and take your jacket off and, you know, and do what's comfortable and what's safe for you. Uh, but yeah, you can start there. Um, or while it's raining outside, go stand in the cold rain. Um, mm. A lot of different ways to just like get started and start reconditioning the mind uh, to cold being a negative thing. I think a lot of us have this idea that cold is negative. I mean, I even hear people say like, you'll catch a cold if you go outside, mm. which doesn't even from a scientific standpoint make sense because cold would naturally boost your immune system. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, super interesting. Yeah even, yeah, even the name we have for that common respiratory illness, right? We call it a cold, um, but it's not the cold that's doing it. It's some kind of microorganism. So it's funny. Um, okay. When we look at cold therapy protocols, like in terms of when to do it, I think you said 
you used to do it early morning and you started doing it late night. Like what, how does timing impact cold therapy, uh, temperature, like what, where should people be kind of aiming for their temperature range, duration, um, other protocols? Like how do you, how do you recommend people structure this practice? Yeah. So I think there's like five main ones. If you're an endurance athlete, um, what I would recommend is set your ice bath at around 50 to 55 degrees and soak longer for a longer period of time. And if you're just getting started in it, maybe set it to 60 degrees and soak even longer. And the idea is endurance athletes, they need, they desperately need to flush out their muscles and reduce inflammation. And so the longer they soak, uh, at a higher temperature, higher being between 50 and 60 degrees, like they're going to see just tremendous benefits. Uh, if you're a, you know, more, uh, uh, strength type athlete, you want to wait four to five hours after, and then utilize your ice bath for three to five minutes between 45 and 55 degrees. Uh, so again, you're going to go a little bit colder in a little bit shorter amount of time. Uh, um, if you're using it to improve sleep quality, then do it about two hours before bed. Um, I would take mine usually anywhere between like six and seven o'clock getting to bed between eight and nine. Uh, if you're using it to like boost your mood and energy levels, help with symptoms of anxiety and depression, um, like one to three minutes at like 45 degrees, maybe a little colder if you can tolerate it, obviously for a starting place, maybe start up in the fifties and creep it down. And you're just going to, you're going to get in there for th one to three minutes and then hop about. If you have access to a sauna, 10 minutes in the sauna, three to four minutes in the ice, doing that three to four times, you're going to change your life. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay. And then, so what it changes, I mean, you've already hit on some of this, but like, it seems to me like this, if it's like meditation, a lot of the benefits I got from a meditation practice were mostly mostly centered around like mental health and wellness. I think that I was a little more, there's much more equanimity, I guess. I had less flight or fight response as you described. Um, but do you view this as part of kind of a mental health and wellness toolkit? And if so, like what else are you doing for mental health and wellness more generally? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're all looking and trying to ask the question, like, how do we live better longer? You know, and not mm. just how do we, live, how do we live better? Mm. Uh, so this is definitely like a tool in the tool belt. The reason I like the cold is it's extremely quantifiable. It's not like taking a supplement and wondering if it works. Like mm. it's very, cold therapy is very, very sensational and you get in, you experience it. It has positive effects on the body and the mind, and you can come back to it. And it's the same experience every time. Mm. Uh, and it's just as hard every time, even though you build up a tolerance to it, like you still have this like inner, inner battle to overcome with exposing yourself to the cold. Um, especially as you get comfortable in it, uh, you know, you kind of get used to it. It's important to stay consistent. And then, you know, if you need to stay in for 30 seconds or, you know, drive the temperature down lower, you can always play with that. Um, but that's one of the reasons why, why I really like the cold is it's, it's impactful and it's quickly impactful. And a lot of us, uh, especially when we're in a state of suffering, quick relief that has lasting benefits is a great place to start. Uh, I mean, I think another one that has helped me tremendously is just like diet. I'm very, very intentional with uh, how I eat, when I eat and what I eat, why I eat it. Um, and that's helped tremendously for the longest time. Um, uh, I just, I looked at food as more than just fuel for my body. And it was, there was a lot more like, I guess, like pleasure and enjoyment around it. But, uh, I would say definitely over the last like five years, it's gotten to a place where, uh, like, even though it might taste good, if I don't feel good, it's not worth it, you know? Right. And so I'm very, very intentional with how and what and when I eat. Uh, and that's helped me from a mental standpoint as well, um, which has been great. So. Uh, I really, I, I like those. Um, I was an avid meditator. It's definitely tapered off, uh, with three kids, uh, <laughs> running the old time. And, uh, I, 
I work out and train um, pretty hard uh, throughout the week. So meditation has definitely fallen off. Although whenever I get a chance, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes during the day, just to stop and do a meditation is phenomenal. Um, yeah, but I, I, the other thing is like for me is uh, I guess more active meditation would be I love watching the sunrise and the sunset. Uh, mm -hmm. that is a great way to start the day. And it just also grounds me, centers me, um, and just helps me set that intention for the day of who I want to be, how I want to show up. Gotcha. Very cool. I'm the point you made on cold there, like you have to always win that argument with yourself to, to jump in the water or whatever. Like there's some value, there's some real value there because I found I have that same argument with myself when I'm trying to adapt to like an early morning workout routine. You know, your alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning or whatever it is. And you have to win that argument with yourself to get out of bed and like actually go to the gym. But if you do it, you know, enough consecutive days, it has this very profound impact on your mental toughness. Like all of a sudden you're just much more in control of yourself, of your biology um, whereas sometimes your biology absent that practice is kind of governing you in a way, right? Like maybe you're eating the chocolate cake or whatever the thing is that you know is going to make you not feel good, but you want in the moment. Um, I also found a lot of value from fasting. I don't know if you've done much of that, but, um, it's the longest fast I've done was actually a 14 day fast of just water and I don't know what else to call it other than spiritual discipline. It's like after you go through that, it sort of unclutters your mental and emotional baggage along the way. And then after the fast, I feel like I'm just much more in control of my impulses overall. Um, so it sounds like cold therapy might be kind of fitting, fitting that bill somewhere like meditation, fasting, something like that. Um, and yeah, that you're just, yeah. you're reasserting control over yourself. Yeah, absolutely. They call them like the, like there's like five hormetic responses in the body. And so cold is one of them. Uh, heat is another. Fasting is definitely one. Uh, I, I love water fasting uh, as well. Um, the other one would be like, I would, I would say like meditation breath work, but, but for duration, uh, you can achieve the hormetic response after you've probably like 30 to 40 minutes of breath work and or like hour and a half to two hours somewhere in there of like meditation is another great hormetic stress and hormesis is the process of um short-term stress on the body for long-term relief yeah. uh, so you're teaching your body to express existing genes that were previously not expressing themselves and uh by expressing like activating uh, so the hormetic practices are super interesting. The last one, which I find so fascinating is, uh, it happens during like ultra running, uh, when people find themselves almost like hallucinating and or sleeping on the trail while they're actively running. Uh, that's usually the part where they can quantify. It's been a, like, there's a hormetic response happening in the body, uh, because it's really seeing high levels of norepinephrine and epinephrine in the body. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I guess like the, it sounds to me like the central axis of all of this, the, you know, cold therapy, meditation, fasting, physical exercise, conscious dieting, the central axis seems to be something like living an intentional lifestyle. Yes, yeah, for sure. What does that mean to you? And like, how do you try and express that in your own life? I, I said earlier, like trying to live not only longer, but better, but what does that mean to you to really try and, and live an intentional lifestyle? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it's important on a lot of different levels. Uh, for me, like I want to show up, uh, really, really well for my family, for my kids. I want to, I want to lead by example. I want to, I want to be able to stay in service to my fellow man and create and add value, uh, to humanity. And I believe for me, that starts, you know, with every little decision I make, I believe we are like the sum of all the little things around us, right? The sum makes the whole. And so 
uh, it's so important for me just to stay consistent in the small things, focus on becoming 1% better in every little area every day, uh, le- doing that and leading by example. Um, and that that has a tremendous ripple effect throughout time and space. And, um, yeah, I, I just think it's so important that I, I believe like the highest state of being and living is in some form of sacrifice, um, for the greater good of those around you. Um, so for me, a lot of that comes down to how I discipline my body and my mind, my spirit, uh, and how I tend and care for those around me. Mm. So self-discipline is like the key ingredient to a life well-lived, something like that. Yeah, I think it definitely helps for sure. (laughs) Yeah, I felt too that those times, not to aim at happiness, but it seems like happiness, certainly the conditions in which I'm able to be happy seem to present themselves a lot more readily when I'm the more self-disciplined I am. So when I'm on a good routine, like I'm up early, I'm eating right, I'm you know, meditating, uh, I'm adhering to the calendar that I've set for myself, like all these things, um, life seems to go a lot better, <laughs> which yeah, it, seems like it, it might not, like it's hard, it seems very hard and it might be like, you know, painful to endure all of that, but it definitely seems to be kind of like with cold therapy, right? It sounds miserable to jump in some freezing cold water for a few minutes, but somewhat paradoxically has this very beneficial rebound effect. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember I heard this quote one time that really resonated with me was like, don't seek happiness, seek peace. And those are two completely different things. Mm. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea of like being ruled by if I'm happy or not, right. That I can't lead my days. Um, especially with like the fluctuation of emotion. That's why like motivation is great, but like discipline is what gets you across the finish line. It's not on motivation. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, finding, finding peace in life is a different path than finding happiness in life. And usually finding peace, there's some form of suffering that comes along with that. Um, and yeah, I think it's important that we train our brains to really dopamine based on our effort, not based on what feels good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. So, yeah, that's the H- Huberman's is something like that, right? The cheap dopamine is the devil that you need to find yeah. these, these, these forms of dopamine that you have to work for. That's, that is key to becoming fulfilled, I guess, and satisfied in life versus cheap dopamine, right? Like alcoholism or drugs or sugar or whatever the thing is. Um, those might give you that short term dopamine hit, but there's long term, uh, negative consequences. Yeah, totally. Totally. Probably one of the strongest in our societies is being right. Mm. <laughs> when you're right, the amount of dopamine that gets released is insane. That's when we could all work on retraining. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. Uh, Wyatt, man, I appreciate you helping me learn a a bit about cold therapy here. Uh, Where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, so icebarrel.com is a great place to learn more about the benefits of cold therapy uh, and more about the product itself. Uh, We also have tremendous um, pages on the website that have accumulated the science and have made it accessible and easily understood. Uh, secondly, we have our blogs on the website where you can almost look up any ailment, diagnosis, question in regard to cold therapy. And there's a blog about it that we have thoughtfully put together with different medical journalists and researchers, uh, over the past few years. And then also, I think probably the funnest place to find us is on Instagram. Um, we really strive to support the cold therapy community and show up for them in any way that we can. So it's an accumulation of the cold therapy community engaging, interacting, and just sharing the their enjoyment and love for cold water. Awesome. Why, man? This has been a great conversation. I appreciate you doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me.